the Yasa and the Diana could use some priority mid to roam around the map and cause absolute havoc. So I think it will definitely be a top side game. I think it should be, just because Quirky Zeri, I don't think, do anything to each other. Arcane Comet for the, the Camille. Game. Not too rare, just getting a bit of extra damage through each time you press the W because you're not really able to use yeah. fleet footwork. Or same, same idea as the Comet on the Malphite, right? Yeah, you and just, the Aatrox who used to take it as well. Yeah, against range stuff. Just want a little extra poke. Corky with the Halo Blades, though, as well. Not going yep. for the Betty Triforce into Infinity Edge we saw last game. It looked quite good. It did. Uh, Gives yeah. you a little bit more tankiness, which I think is often yeah. underrated. Also, movement speed from the Triforce. Yeah, it's a very different playstyle versus the... You expect a lot more Valkyrie forward with the Halo Blades. Yep. And I think in a game like this, you can get away with it because there's so much going on. There's so much diving in that a lot of the time Corky's going to have to be somewhat of an afterthought. Maybe not for like Camille's in, but Yeah, and it, even looks like a, it looks like a fine game to build lethality on the Corky. You can't really go tabbies on Camille uh, into the TF. You just have to go Merc Treads. Another reason this champion is ridiculous. And Cleanse here for Ching 9. Pretty much only... Because of the TF. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much only for TF. Yeah. Kind of a crazy champion. Kind of, I guess. <laughs> Rel Q, but... I don't know. Early trade. Very heavily won so far from DCG, but Ching 9 going to be able to find a bit of damage on the return there to Orca, and all things considered only slight lead uh, given to Deep Cross Gaming. Yeah. How scary is this jungle matchup for Diana? I think it may be very scary. I don't think it's too scary. I, I think in general... Diana's actually quite good at dueling. Okay. As long as she has her three items, she has a shield available to herself. Obviously, the empowered auto attacks coming through every third, similar to how Zinzal works. Uh, and just a lot of up upfront burst damage coming through from the champ. If you get a reset on your E as well, can always try and use it to get away elsewhere. And the 2v2 potential of Yasuo Diana is a whole lot higher than the 2v2 of a Huey and Zinzal, unless yeah, played not, very well. Yeah, not much is keeping up with a fresh level 6 Yasuo Diana. As well as Taco is almost certainly going to be able to be in any play yeah, before this is, Yeah, Yeah, this is a very scary mid-game for DCG. For DCG or Halpix? Oh, from DCG, I guess. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I or agree. Orca's going to be running around. Feng will be fine, clearing waves but if he has to. Oh, for a second there, I thought we were going under a tower. <laughs> yeah. What connects? Oh, nice wow. Nice buffer, though. And the crash down actually connects on the back end there of that knock-up as Kiri getting pelted and does just have enough health to survive. Wow, I'm surprised Feng doesn't commit the flash. Or Orca, really. Hold up, Ching 9 going to get flashed on. There is the flash and the cleanse, but 65's here. Tries to find out any information. Will be able to know now that the jungle is not around. Ching does not have any sums available. Kiri does. One Q coming up could mean the end, but is not going to commit to diving under the inner turret. Yeah, I don't think he has quite enough damage. Carry still has his flash. Uh, yeah, 665 going a little bit slow there. I think worried about finding a Zin in that bush. Sure. Disastrous start, though, in any case, for Halpigs, as they are going to lose both summoners on Ching 9, lose a bunch of minions, as well as the XP that comes along with them. Yeah, Criscata uh, even said. defends Raptors. So. Yeah, that seems illegal. Yeah. Like, how'd that happen? Yeah, I think oh. Zin could have just hit. And top's not going well early for the Camille. Pretty predictable, considering the jungler hasn't shown his face up top yet. Yeah, surprising when he sees the Diana bot that he doesn't try and make a plate top. I guess had just finished his clear and wanted to go for the safe play. Yeah, but unfortunately, Chris Carter single-handedly stopping that somehow. Yeah. Not only though, returning a lot of damage, doing pretty well. Obviously, fleet footwork, Doran's shield as well as a potion available still for Chris Carter, so he's going to actually feel pretty safe as long as Zinzel doesn't turn up. Yes, yeah, CSing very well on the Yasuo. Uh, you know, losing, trading his HP for minions, as you often have to do. Melee into range, mid lane. Uh, and just hoping... Ching 9, no up. flash. Uh -oh. Stun, knock up, and a lot of follow-up coming through here for 665. Valkyrie forward, but Ching 9 is going to be able to jump on over that wall. Phosphorus Bar on the back end does land. Chris Carter now, he's going to have to dip and dive through all these minions. Does flash away. Abyss also using that flash, but not able to connect on that third knockup from the Zinzao. Cuba 65 hook back in. Shield coming through to first blood for Ching 9. 
Disaster has start, but turned around as Ching Nai now jumping forward aggressively. Got the Conqueror stacked fully up and is pelting away at Orca's health bar, but will not be able to find it. Yeah, 665 way overextended as a level 4 Diana. Isn't bringing much in the first place, but just gets caught under tower and dies. Gonna much needed kill for Cheng, who is... Oh, this is still very scary. Yeah, no sums. Hook lands, but that should be one going down. Shield, Orca is going to take that last auto attack and go down, but it is for a double kill there. Wow, and a the solo Feng. plate to top it off for Feng. He is massive on the Corky now. And nice flash from Kerry here. Maybe just shouldn't be continued by 665 once he gets the flash. Yeah, the double, the second jump was a little bit too much, right? Yeah. But Chris ultimately, you know, ends up at a two for two. <laughs> yeah, Criscata in the meantime outplayed a very difficult to outplay gank mid. Is just down his flash now, though. Yeah, it does go aggressive. He's dead. dead. There is no way out of this now. A little bit too much uh, aggression out of the mid lane here for DCG, and yeah. there's going to be a kill given over to Abyss, so the return gank is successful. Makes it scary for Nully for a second there, but yeah, there was a Nautilus showing up too. Not six yet on this Diana, so needs to get that ASAP, and I think that's the best way you can help this Yasuo in the mid lane is just get level six on Diana. Would have been nice to have blown Nuli's flash somehow, but without Rel, you're never really uh, doing that pre-6. Yeah, this top lane with no jungle interaction. Yeah, it's not feeling looks like a counter pick. completely miserable. Yeah, definitely not looking like a counter pick yet. We'll see what Gwang Gwang can do this game. Yeah, it has to be said, the Nasus look better. Yeah, very true. Did the Nasus get ganks? I think the Nasus did get ganks. Pretty sure Nasus got some help. Was it first strike? First strike Emax? Yeah. Was it Emax? I think it might have been W Max. Might have been Emax though. Yeah, Fang is up 20 CS, 2 and 0. Making his way to a collector, I imagine? Yeah, I would think so. Kiri loses a large chunk of his health again and 665 is back. There is cleanse now available for Ching 9, but is he going to be able to even find a way to use it? Not so far. Might be able to cleanse the Ignite if he needs to. Almost oh. catches Orca on the back end, but is not going to be able to get it as yeah. Tower even. Juggled perfectly fine there for DCG. It's another two kills going over. Yeah. Shared between Fing and 665. Horror story in the bot lane for Hellpigs now. I mean, DCG have identified that they can just win this game through bot, so Hellpigs have to figure out something they can do Orcus elsewhere. Gata is going to be able to find the Fate Seal, just looking for even more, but Nulli should be completely fine. Doesn't even have to use his flash. Yeah, I think Criscata just desperately trying to burn his flash there. Because once his flash is down, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, in the mid lane, Abyss will finally get some counter jungling done by the look of it. And Criscata was even at the Raptors waiting for him. Walker's now going to figure out what's going on. and Yeah. And this could be a bit scary for Taco and the TF now. Um, yeah, 65 and Orca are in the vicinity. Yeah, we'll see how this plays out. actually looking for Abyss. There is going to be Destiny available for Taco, but I think Abyss is quick enough to get on out of there without being spotted. Yeah, Camille can't get much lower if this play is ever going to work. They'd like to just force with a Camille ult here on the TF, I think. Yeah, look for the guaranteed level 6 kill, but it's less guaranteed when enemy support is top lane. Yeah, when you've already seen the enemy support here, it is so hard to pull the trigger on that play. Collector finish now at 9 minutes for Feng. Yeah, and Ching's not having fun as his minion wave slowly, but surely pushes away from anywhere near where he can auto-attack them. Although, Kiri's here. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that's I'm a not lot even, of damage. I'm not even sure he lost the 2v1 there. Yeah, level 5 Nautilus maybe is able to get it done as... Oh, oh there here we go. go. Yeah, this should just be a free kill, I think. Taco with flash available, goes popped! Third auto attack! Oh, no! No way. He didn't get any off before the flash came through and so had to try and land all three consecutively. Wasn't able to. Level 6 on mid and jungle here goes in. Is gonna lock up two and that is a successful dive once again for DCG. Yeah, DCG insistent. They can just win this game through bottom lane and Helpix still haven't found any counter. Uh, what well, do you know? Play. Taco's back. Yeah, Taco did lose his flash. Top goes, lane. But... 
So that's a repeat, but any snowballing of this Camille is just going to happen so slowly compared to this Corky, who is already massive. Yeah, and honestly, you get a kill on this Camille now, it kind of just evens the lane. Yeah. Taco yeah, that's already true. being up 30, 40 CS almost. Yeah, it always feels better point. to play around a winning lane uh, than a losing one. Yeah, and there's not really any winning lanes. You could argue mid is, but Chris Carter did just pick up a kill and assist for fun. Yeah. Yeah, hard game now for West Point. Uh, they have to rely on just squishy targets on DCG and being able to get some clean kills with Nautilus ulties. For sure. I think what I want to see now is this This game does feel like it should be over. Not not necessarily because of the gold or anything, but it's just a team composition of DCG where they can just keep going forward. And that is what their comp wants to do. Yeah. It's what ultimately, you know, Halpix kind of want to happen, but not from this far behind. Yeah. And, and so I think keep going forward and playing it cleanly to get this job done. And, and what I want to see from DCG really is how cleanly they can actually do it because they've always been a team that truly can contest with the best teams of our region but it's just inconsistent right yeah. like they've able to take down psg we've seen them take them down in a series and then the next time they meet each other it is just an absolute wipe well, so and then next time they meet a bottom tier team they're fighting for their lives yeah exactly well, it's like know? this team's highs are ridiculous yeah but there's a, there's a consistency to it that needs to start growing. And I think now you're in your second split together. Yes, Feng is now your starting AD carry. And I think ultimately he probably brings a, a level of consistency you might you might really want. Uh, but against a team like Halpigs where you don't really expect them to upset DCG, you want to really clean out these games or finish them out cleanly, shall I say. Yeah. Good way to do that is to stack up these objectives. They're going to grab the Void Grubs and probably yeah. head straight to Dragon. Yeah, we'll see. The bot lane in Feng and Orca are trying to defend this dragon as Halpig's head there. This is going to start it up, but there's enough time, all the time in the world, to get down here. And Yeah, I've got bad news for Halpig's if they want to do that dragon. Yeah, Nolly also just losing the poke war mid. And that is to a Yasuo, oh, so I just my. clarify. Just before this dragon starts, which looks like it's going to be uncontested. Teleport available. Nolly can get here if he wants to, but it does, yeah, it does seem like... The bot lane, at least for Halpigs, are uninterested. And with how the items stand, there's no way you ever look for anything here. No, though, teleporting yeah. top. Can they find the angle here? There is no flash available. In comes the scissor and a nice, nice, nice work. They will get the kill. It's normally who picks it up. Yeah. It's Hextech ugly. ultimatum just confirms it 100% of the time. Yeah, it's ugly, but it's exactly what you wanted. Uh, if you're Halpigs, it's dicey for a sec. Not ugly, but they get the kill on the TF, but... I don't know if it's even even out the lane at this point. Yeah, probably not with the passive and all things that come with it. And it's certainly not even out the game as it is just a tower. First tower of the game picked up, bot lane, solo for Feng. Leather on King also now completed for uh, Chris Garda, so. Yeah, so unless Gongon -Gon has and this Triforce. And an for Feng. Oh, yeah, look at, me. look at bot lane items. Compare the ADC items. Can Orca 1v1 Zinzel? Not going to need to as Destiny comes through. In comes the gold card. Nice usage. Or nice way to get rid of that Blast Cone, I suppose. And it's going to be Chris Garda. Uh, yeah. Abyss kind of just by himself at enemy red buff finds four members of DCG. Uh, was very strong, actually. Had his item, his first item completed on the Zinzao. Yeah, so. Sunder Sky. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't get to use that. Yeah, not a whole lot of health just came back to him. Chris Garber looks like he might pick up the second of these inner turrets. Yeah, it's going to be close. He should get it. Yeah, he'll get it, but he will take one shot. Doesn't really matter. Got by the wrong king. He'll back up, and his whole team is here on the top side. Yeah, mid tower next for DCG, I imagine. Not the easiest tower for them to take. Uh, they might have to dive to do it. Yeah, their siege isn't too good, but their dive is yeah, almost insane. unparalleled. Yeah. Flash, nice flash from Ching 9 gets him out of that, but still gets knocked up there. Oh, they're still Tempest. Yeah, and now you may have flashed my Diana engage, but my Rel still has flash. Uh, two for one flash is always worth it, but yeah, now and, you're and the cleanse does nothing as well. It's important to add. Yeah, only worried about knockups when you've got the Yasuo. And uh, while you're stressing about these Yasuo combos, there is just a four and O Corky 
with two items <laughs> who no one on Helpix can stand in front of. And I mean, apart from Zen, Taco. Well, Taco's going to be dead again, dead maybe. Going to get stunned up, should absolutely go down. Flash gets hooked, though, and this will be a dead twisted fate. You did commit three people, and Rift Shield has been popped as mid tower will be absolutely taken out here. Cheng Nine cannot do absolutely anything, especially without his Nautilus nearby. Yeah, it's just going to be two. I don't think DCG ever go for three towers here. So happy for that. I don't think Taku really expected to be focused just that hard. And Yeah, one well, tower for two and a kill from where the game was probably isn't the worst for West Point. Not the worst, but it still is, I think, a winning yeah, yeah, situation definitely. for DCG. Yeah. Who now find themselves up 5k gold, which is nothing to scoff at at 16 minutes. Yeah, Rift Herald sprinting. Yeah, it's on that Sunday morning walk of shame. Yeah. Will she make it to the tier 3? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, top tier 1 in the sights of Hellpigs. I'm not sure... If this will work, it actually will work if they go right now. Do they know that, though? They have a very short window to go right this second. And now, they are in trouble. Although Orca, kind of surprisingly, maybe he was not looking exactly where he was. <laughs> because the Orca I know would have just immediately jumped on that. Yeah. Fine though, absolutely didn't need to, and it probably wouldn't have resulted in anything either. Considering, yeah, these kind of fights might be a little more appealing because you get to fight away from your twisted fate, so you can ulti in. Here he comes. Yeah, absolutely fantastic cancel there on the dredge line as Taco searching for a gold card. Unfortunately, not able to find it in time, and Flash will get Kiri out alive. Yeah, interrupts a recall, stagnates the tempo of Helpigs a little bit. DCG almost 6k in the lead now. All right. Yasuo on solo queue kills me here, but nice fear by Nuli. Yeah. Yeah, this champ is too hard to kill. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, you can always bring four people. <laughs> I honestly think Halpig, I mean, sorry, not Halpig, DCG might just be strong enough to insta-dive a tower. Yeah, I think they can 5v5 dive at this point if they land a good Diana ulti. But that is a very unnecessary risk, and as I said earlier, it's probably best to prove that you can finish out a, a game in a timely fashion, but, you know, smoothly and... Yeah, I'm always up for a limit test, if DCG want to go for one. Zonya's going to be second item for 665, just concerned with Engage this game. Uh, doesn't need to worry about his own damage all that much. Just solo AP, so he's, he'll always be fine on damage, even into the tanky, tanky guys on helping. All right, bit of a lull period, but it was third dragon picked up for DCG Ocean Soul on the table. It's not the best for them. Uh, not very tanky at all, really. Anyone on their team, so. Yeah, get, getting it so early is going to be a big deal. It kind of the kind of the best usage of it for their team is Corky and his mana, which is yeah. not usually what you're thinking of immediately when you think Ocean Soul. You're thinking, "Damn, this Cassante does 1,000 damage, is unkillable, and now has infinite regen." And his Q costs 15 mana. <laughs> but in this game, I think DCG have picked only Orca, who has a War Monks mm. uh, as, as a tank, and and you don't really care too much about the health regen from Ocean. It actually might be, for the first time ever, the worst soul for a team comp. Yeah. Like, I think Chemtech will give you more value, the damage reduction. Really? Ocean is very broken, though. Yeah, but the damage increase and damage reduction for a team comp like this? Because, I mean, Cloud is I one of the it. best. Yeah, yeah. Cloud with a, with a champion like Raul is, is insane. Yeah, as much as we want to hate on Cloud because it doesn't do damage. Yeah, the movement speed's nuts. Yeah, you just have to put respect on it because of the win rate uh, on Cloud Dragon is just insane. It's actually Phantom Dancer second on the Zeri. Don't always see that. I feel like we see a lot of Runans. Yeah, maybe valuing a bit extra movement speed as we were just touching on. and. Yeah. I think I prefer Rack and Slayer and Blade of the Ruined King's Airy builds. 
over the Static Shiv. Uh, but maybe just feeling like we need the wave clear. Low is just still living in the times of the Black Cleaver Titanic Hydra. Oh, I wish. Runons. Don't forget Runons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unkillable 1,000 Here's a fight. million damage and double knockout coming through. It is a nice combo, but it's not as perfect as Chris Carter's very low. Knockout comes through there from the Nautilus of Kiri, but he does go down. It's one for zero as things stand. Guang Wang trying to find a way in, won't be able to do so as Taco locks him up with that gold card. One more order will do it. And a 65 comes through with a really nice flash forward to confirm yet another kill onto Ching. Nine, nearly alive, trying to output as much damage as he can, but Taco is wailing on him. Through will come that Zonyas, but he's going to get taken out. It's a trick. Triple kill for 665 on this Diana, only carry up alongside Abyss, and it is five strong here for DCG as they march down mid. They might be able to end. They might be able to. It's going to be small death time as this early on into the game, but they are just going to settle for that inhib and walk on out. Chris Gar in the meanwhile, taking out the inner in the top side. Yeah, massive gold for DCG just off the kills and the turrets taken. They can recall straight into a Baron now if they want to. And... Yeah, it wasn't an amazing engage by any means, but it was enough with how far DCG are ahead to just ult, ult the two frontliners here with the Asuo ult. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and rather than using the Diana for the engage, 665 was able to pick up a triple kill this fight because of how much space was and created And what a windfall, by the way. Just Ching Nai not able to do a single point of damage. Yeah. Meanwhile, Guangguan meets Corky this fight and just gets one tap. And yeah, that what was a a, flash. an immaculate flash. And yeah, these fights just not long enough and not enough frontline for the way to do anything. Taco even red cards him there, but uh, it just doesn't matter. They're too ahead. Fight is too one-sided already. While not doing too much uh, that team fight, I think the Zonyas is really necessary for Nuli to build second here. There's just yeah. so much team fighting. If you get hit by any of it, you die. And so getting the Zonyas for a bit of safety is nice. Nice double knock up here from 65, who was almost one shot carry alongside his AD carry. And Feng picks up the kill there. Spiraling Despair comes through and it is doing some damage, but certainly not enough as the second found Abyss does go down. Nuli, he might be able to just get back to his tower and it looks like he will, but Taco could look for the cutoff. Yeah, DCG playing so well off of each other. They're, they have a lot of tower damage, so they're just going for the end now. Yeah, 22 minutes, no Baron, but they are still looking for the end. Ching Nai's going to have to flash away. He's got ordered twice by the Corky. Nuli going to be pounced on. He's going to get hit by a lot of knockups. Does go golden. Chris Garda does not time the third Q correctly and will allow another survival. Going on on the back is going to go down. It's once again Feng picking that one up with infinite Corky damage going on. Chris Garda, he's dancing, prancing all around the Nexus, finds a double knockup and finds another kill for Feng on on this Corky, so much damage, so much success, and in a dominant fashion, it's DCG picking up their first win of the summer. And they proved me wrong. I was worried about the Yasuo. It worked a treat that game. Had a great lane phase into the way, and then just did his job in team fights. Pressed R when one of the knockups connected. There is something to be said about the simplicities of an entire team comp. That's one objective: is press R. Yeah. There, there's like, there's, there, you know, a lot of overcomplication goes into League of Legends, I think. And when you're at the highest level, admittedly, you're playing, you know, Gen G against BLG, T1, whatever. You need to get intricate with a lot of things. Yeah. Sometimes it's Keep easy it enough to just lock in a bunch of champs that press R because, you know, it's on a long cooldown, but it's the most.